Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in today's video, we are talking about some dated design trends that you might have in your home and I am here to tell you that they are back. So be sure you save them and we have got to talk about it now. The first thing we have to discuss, the first dated trend that's back that I'm seeing all over the place is actually thin plank wood floors. Thanks to the Modern Farmhouse Girls, the wide plank floors were very in. And I think this was a, for a couple of reasons. One is, you know, the wider the plank of floor is, the less planks there are to install, so it's easier to like put that into a house, which is cool. And then, you know, it was also like a prestige thing, like, oh my goodness, the, the thickness of these planks, are, they're so wide, like, I, I don't particularly care about that. It wasn't impressive to me, but a lot of people were, so, Love that for you. And also when it comes to something like an alternative, a vinyl floor or a tile, it's easier to use a wider plank because it covers more ground and space and there's less manufacturing, saving money. But thin plank floors are very much back in style. Now, I think the reason for this is because we have this like return to classical design and interiors, and I'm very happy about it. I love these historic older homes. You see them all over social media, all over the place. And I was recently at a hardware store and I saw pre-finished thin plank floors. They were like two and a quarter, two and a half inch planks. Oh, I was over the moon. I'm like fully prepared. Like, okay, we're doing it. We're expanding this renovation. We're taking up all of the floors we already redid. We're putting these in. I want them so bad. I can taste them because I love a thin plank wood floor. And I think a part of the reason this looks really good and it has that classic reference is because how much variation you have. And because those, those planks are thinner, then you get a little more movement and you get more graining by having these thinner plank floors because there, there's just more variation in them. And I think it's fantastic. Fantastic. I'm seeing this in solid wood and for the first time I'm actually seeing thin plank floors available in uh, engineered flooring which I'm so happy about. Engineered flooring is great so our hardwoods it just depends on the area you live and the needs you have but I think this is fantastic. I've yet to see this kind of move into the vinyl or the tile area and I imagine once that does happen it won't be individual planks it'll be more like you know a printed image on that surface that looks like multiple planks of flooring so that is something to consider and think about in your home I think steer clear from that perspective like if you're gonna do vinyl just go for white plank or tile go for that but when it comes to the actual wood thin plank floors are in and I have so happy about it. Now, of course, I'm not telling you to take up your beautiful wood floors or anything you have in your house. Every trend is not for every person, it's not for every space, and you absolutely do not have to take advantage of every one of them. If you have those luxurious and beautiful wide plank floors that you spend a lot of money on, it's, it's good, it's great, it's fantastic. Wood does not go out of style. Now, obviously in your home, if you're having flooring issues, difficulties, any issues or difficulties, anything whatsoever when it comes to design, I am at your service and you can book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me using the link in the description box down below or going to intro.co slash Garrett Lachique. Another dated trend that is back that I am seeing and actually we have to talk about, we haven't for a while, uh, it just hasn't been the popular thing, are shutters, uh, interior shutters for your windows. I think these are back. I think you're going to see a lot more of them. And I think there's a time and a place for them. A lot of people like to do them like just on the front of their house. That way from the street, you kind of have that fixed moment there and they are very built in. They are very expensive. And I think if you have a space where it works for you, that's a good thing. A lot of people also are like, oh, it blocks out so much light and they have to go. So I think there's a happy medium there. And a lot of people also just look at them and they're like, oh, we have to do something different, take them down. I've lived in homes that have shutters and I like them. And I have lived in homes that didn't have shutters and I like them. A lot of clients I work with have shutters in their homes and some of them don't. So it, it just depends and it varies on what's outside of the window. What are you looking at? Is it blocking out all of the great light or is it blocking out a view you really don't wanna see? There is definitely a time and a place for them. Now, I, what I will say about shutters is that they are one of the most expensive window treatments you can put into your home. And there are lots of sales pitches out there about why you should or shouldn't have them. And I'm gonna leave that where it is. It's not really any of my business. But what I will say is that get multiple quotes for them. I personally have gotten quotes for shutters that were like 
really low kind of garbage quality that were just as high as the really good solid wood nice high-end shutters so you know be be tactful about what you're doing there and definitely get multiple quotes because like the, the girls are trying to scam you okay like let's just call it what it is like there are people out there that are scammers they're they're trying to retire off of doing window treatments in your house and i love that fantasy for them but Sometimes that's just not for everyone. So get multiple quotes for everything you're doing and look for those affordable alternatives to see what will work best for you. Now, I don't think shutters are gonna be for everyone in every house. And you know me, I love a good window treatment. I love a drape. I love a Roman blind. So definitely consider all of your options to see what's out there. But I definitely think you are going to start seeing more shutters in homes. And I'm happy about it. I think it's great. You know, they are a real statement moment. They're very built in. They are substantial they are very luxurious and expensive. So I don't think they're necessarily for everyone, but for those of you that have them and love them, I think shutters are fantastic. Now I do think the window treatments in your home should be somewhat consistent. Like if you get shutters all on the front of your house, maybe the rooms that are next to them, consider putting shutters on those windows that are also in them, or you know, looking for some way to dress them up and make that cohesivity in the space. It, that way it just feels a little more natural, but with that said, I think there are plenty of options out there. I've talked about window treatments a million and one times, and if you're a subscriber here, then you know that. And if you're not a subscriber here, that's probably why your window treatments are a mess, but that's beside the point. You should definitely consider joining us, hitting that subscribe button, becoming a part of the Le Chic family, and I would greatly appreciate it if you gave this video a like. Another dated trend that is back and back with a vengeance, darling, is floral wallpaper and murals. I love a good wallpaper moment, whether it's a muted, simple, understated textural element, whether it's a floral, a bold graphic. I don't really like an oversized floral or an undersized floral because I think they're a little too busy or a little too childish, but you know, there's a fine line there. However, they are back. And the way I'm really seeing this happen in work is obviously with the grand millennial lovers, okay? Like we get it, we got it, we love those girls. I, like I, I dabble my toes into that. You know, I like a traditional moment juxtaposed with something really modern and contemporary, but that's what I'm really seeing with these wallpapers. Take a classical mural, a hand-painted moment. Think de Gournay or Gracie Studio wallpapers, like gorgeous, gorgeous quality, incredibly designed products, right? juxtaposed with really contemporary and modern light fixtures and futuristic and mid-century style furniture layered in with beautiful antiques all of that layered together. And I think it has a really bold statement moment in the space. A lot of these murals and wallpapers are actually artwork themselves. And so they don't require you putting a ton of stuff on the wall over them. Like, yes, I have like, you know, off-white creamy walls here and I hang some vibrant artwork on them. That way I get some color, I get some boldness without it being overwhelming. And like, if I got wallpaper in here, you wouldn't be able to see the scale of it in this background behind me. So it just wouldn't make sense in this space. But you know, I'd love to do that in another part my home, but you don't have to do a ton, a ton of stuff on the walls or anything like that because you're, then you're covering up all of the expensive wallpaper you're paying for. So I love these murals. I love a floral wallpaper moment, but you kind of have to be smart about how you're doing it. You can't just be like, oh, you know, we're going to put it on here and like, oh, it's so granny and so chic. Like, uh, like, is it though? Probably not. So give me the modern take on that. Give me a muted color scheme with a bold accent moment. Give me modern light fixtures with a more traditional wallpaper. That's what I like to see. I think it keeps it fresh and vibrant and feeling interesting and new because when everything is too much of the same, it can, it can be a little bit boring. So the floral wallpaper, mural wallpapers are definitely, definitely back with a vengeance. They are here to stay, mostly because they're so expensive that people are not just gonna be like, oh, it's a trend, get rid of it now. Absolutely not. I love them so much. If I had flat walls in my house, honestly, every wall would be wallpapered, but that's a conversation for uh, another time, a different video that will, actually I'll talk about it in my dream home video, which will be coming soon. So be sure you are subscribed for that one. You know what, it actually really seems like all of you are loving some of these more like personal things I've been doing lately. I've been posting photos in the community post section of my channel, which you can check out. You know, I live in Las Vegas and I absolutely love to embrace everything we have going on here. So I've been like having, you know, gorgeous dinners. And if you're ever in town, like, 
We went to the Golden Steer the other day. Actually, we've been going there for a very long time, but you know, we liked that. We went to Ocean Prime recently. We love that. So I definitely think we need to start maybe doing some little vlogs, some decor, and I don't know, like Las Vegas vlogs. That would be fun too. Let me know what would you like to see in the comment section down below. What do you want to see me out there doing and decorating or going? Where should I go shopping? Should I take you to restaurants? What do you want to see? Sound off in the comment section down below. Now, while you're sounding off in the comment section, and let's talk about the next dated trend that is back. And I'm pretty excited about it. I'm liking it, but you have to be careful. And that is a scallop detail. Now the scallop detail is back because of Gen Z. Not everyone agrees with everything that Gen Z, you know, likes design wise and that's okay, it's acceptable, but they like a squiggly line and the scallop detail is about as close to that as you can get with any form of structure or elegance. I don't know what else to say about that. But the scallop detail is back and it is back big time for both traditional and modern design. You know, I'm seeing this on furniture backs and details, upholstery. I actually, I was actually about to buy some linen napkins embroidered with our, you know, like our little monogram that had a scallop detail on them that are really gorgeous. Probably should order those, but that's beside the point. The scallop detail on furniture pieces in upholstery for more traditional feeling spaces, but carved into wood for more modern and that, and that kind of organic modern style is very interesting. Think, you know, Sarah Sherman Samuel for Lulu and Georgia. That kind of collection and range is definitely giving us that scallop detail. I'm seeing it on lampshades, light fixtures of all sorts, uh, upholstery, edges of rugs, anything you can imagine with the scallop detail is out there and they are going to become very, very popular. So if you have got those classic pieces with the scallop detail, honey, Oh, you are about to be on trend like you would not believe. We love it. And I've I've been saying for like the last two years or whatever that traditional design is back. Like it's slowly but surely getting its little fingers into all of the contemporary and modern design lovers' homes and spaces. And this is one of those ways. The scallop detail transcends any specific style. So that's why you're seeing it so much and all over the place. And you're about to see so much more of it too. Those sorts of classic details, those little simple understated moments are what is spilling in. And you know, like I said, it, it transcends any specific design style. So I love a scallop detail. They are definitely on their way back, whether you like it or not. I'm not going to bring scallop details that much into my home just because that's not my like design perspective. I just report the news and the facts and I spill the tea to you about what is in and design. So the scallop detail is back. And obviously I try and share with you important details and things that I have learned. As a matter of fact, maybe we need to change this channel name to the Interior Design News Network, IDNN. Yes, I love it, honey. No. Just kidding. <laughs> and listen, I know somebody is gonna snatch up that idea and use it, but just remember, you heard it here first. <laughs> Something else, a dated trend that is on its way back in, and I am happy about it. I'm interested in it. I personally won't do it, but that's okay, is actually granite. Granite is back in, honey, and she is coming back for all of you. All of the marble girls are gasping and, you know, clutching their pearls because granite is coming back in. Now, not that builder grade brown speckled granite. She's out. She's done. She's gone. Uh, don't think about it. Don't consider it. Don't look at it. We're not talking about that. What we're talking about is variations of granite that have a little bit of movement to them, that do have somewhat kind of sort of veining in them. You know, granite isn't like marble. It doesn't have those really soft and delicate colors and veining. It is very bold and you do tend to have a lot more kind of variation in it. And you can see larger chunks of aggregate in it and it does have a more like rustic or wild feel to it. But I think that's why people like it so much and that's why it's going to become more popular. And you know, there's issues with every type of countertop. Marble, you have durability issues. With quartz, it doesn't ever really look natural or real or it takes a very specific, you know, manufacturer of it to make it look real. Ceramic is difficult to install and hard to find someone to actually do the manufacturing of. And then, you know, you have soapstone, which has similar issues with uh, durability to marble, although a little bit better 
there and then you know there's quartzite there's all sorts of things out there but granite has always been known for its durability in your home so if you were that person that you're like no we're hard wearing it's not going to last it's not going to stand up to us we're cooking in here we're doing this we're doing that everything every day maybe granite is for you and there are some incredible variations out there i always 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 say when you are doing countertops whether it's in a kitchen a bathroom anywhere if you're talking about slabs of stone do not go into the hardware store and look at a swatch that's you know this big and be like oh that's so pretty let's put it in no because it's not gonna look like that when it shows up. You have to go to the slab yard and pick your own slabs. And while you're there, look at everything. Don't just sit there and say, nope, we only want this. Nope, we only want that. Walk through every aisle, look at what's out there. Look at what the marble looks like. Look at what the, you know, the quartz looks like. And then compare them. Like that's a really good way to find a natural looking quartz that actually looks like marble. But don't write off the granite. There are some gorgeous, gorgeous granite varieties out there. And because they're not on trend right now, they actually may be a little bit cheaper and a little more budget friendly for you. And it's something to consider. I see granite coming back in, especially because right now so many people are liking these moodier spaces and you can get some really cool moody types of granite that you just can't get with marble. So I definitely think granite is in and I would also like to hear from you, what type of countertops do you have? What do you recommend? What have you had that you've hated? And what are you thinking of changing it out for? Are you considering granite? You're looking at quartz, marble? What is going on? Sound off. I'm looking for some feedback in the comment section down below. Now, while some data trends come back, there are some very expensive things that you don't need that are out that have never been in and you may need to hear that. So be sure you check out this video right here all about expensive interior design that you don't need because it, it, it probably doesn't look as good as you might think it does. So be sure you check out that video and I will see you over there.